What's up guys? So today we have some packages. I often get tools and consumables in and I figured it'd be fun to start a little series where I open some of them on camera, show you some of the new tools I'm getting in and sort of test them on camera with you to see how well they work. I'll have links to everything I bought in the description if you're interested. So let's jump into it. All right, so first we have this from Amazon. Oh, I'm actually excited about these. So we won't be messing with these today. This is actually gonna be for a separate video. I actually got these because of a comment one of my viewers left regarding clean room wipes and how they liked to use these for cleaning flux. But this is going to be for a completely separate video that I'll be doing probably in a couple days. And then I also got this issue my capture card, which I'm excited about. So I got this because all the capture cards I have right now are for my microscope or for this camera you see here, but they're not pass through capture cards. They're just the little like USB ones. I got this pass through one where I can connect it up to a monitor that I can see and also connect it up to OBS because I want to be able to test consoles like PS5s and Xboxes and things live with you guys through OBS without having to like grab this camera and move it around like I've been doing <laughs> in a few videos. So we can actually give this a, a test right now. Let's get this thing open and hook it up and try it out with my Xbox so you guys can see what I mean. Lots of little instructions and things. So it's got a nice little USB-C adapter, which is nice. I like how they have it on the actual cable so you don't lose it. So yeah, pretty, pretty simple. So let me just get this hooked up and I'll show you what I mean. So let's say for example that I want to test this Xbox Series X and I'm working on it. And now instead of having to grab my camera and stuff, I can just switch to this capture card. And when I turn it on, I can both see on the OBS and then on my monitor here, whether or not the display is working. So you can see in this case, we're good. But you get the idea. All right, next thing, the big fragile package. <laughs> this is actually not fragile. It's just, uh, I had to pay extra shipping for this because it's considered a chemical, but it's really not all that exciting to be honest. This is isopropyl alcohol. <laughs> and it's just in time too, because I am like almost out of alcohol. That's my last little bit. So it's good that this came today because I need to use it today. But if you're soldering every day like me, I highly recommend grabbing your consumables like this in bulk. It's gonna save you a lot of time and money in the long run. Happy that this came. Then we've got these guys. These are just RP2040 chips. Oh, they, they always package them differently every time I get them. But these are either for the OLED or V1 and V2. Okay, so these are the ones with the flex cable. So this is for the V1, V2 consoles. As you can see, it's just this one here. Videos up on how to install this one. I just grabbed some for both console types. And I've got these as well, which are going to be for the OLED. So this one looks a bit different. That's what this one looks like here. And I have a video on how to install this in the Switch Lite. And a video is coming up on how to put this in the OLED console. I actually keep this little bag because I usually just throw these together in a drawer. It'll be nice to have them a bit separated. All right, and then we've got this, which I'm really excited about. So this is to continue the series with that switch donor board that we are working on fixing. But it's also just going to be a really nice tool to have in general. And I've been meaning to get this for a bit. But this is a little magnetic positioning plate for reballing which I'm really excited to have and should be useful for a ton of different chip types. It's from, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, Emeo or something like that, but they make a ton of really nice tools, especially for reballing. And here it is. So I actually already have this particular stencil here. This is the Switch APU stencil. So I guess it'd be nice to have a backup. There it is. And then it comes with some nice little blades for spreading out the thermal paste. Let's see, let me grab one of these because I really like this shape. And the sturdiness of this is like perfect for reballing because you don't want something too sturdy because if you put too much pressure on these with solder paste, it's going to squish the solder paste between the stencil and the chip and you don't want that. And then something a little too flexible like these thin things are a little bit too flexible and don't actually get the solder paste to go into the, the holes of the stencil as nicely or it at least doesn't compact them as nicely as a sort of sturdier tool. So this is like a perfect in-between. And I would love to use this, but I don't, maybe this will fit in, in here. That would be really cool. Let's see if this is, oh, this is perfect. Look at this. This fits perfectly in this little BGA tool. I'm really happy about this. Okay, I saw these on the listing and I was like, oh, I probably won't use those, but it's kind of a perfect like 
thickness for spreading thermal paste on these. Or maybe I'll just get another one of these because I often use this and this shape. But I'll be using this for separate reasons for spreading paste. So I honestly wasn't expecting to be as hyped about this little piece of metal. <laughs> it's amazing what the right tool for the job will do for you. So happy about that. And then here is what I mostly got this for, which is this nice, strong magnet base. And this attachment in particular is for the switch. And I think you just put these right above the magnet here. And then let me grab the switch APU. So here is the switch APU we've been working on. And basically this just fits in here super nicely. I don't know if you can see that, but it's recessed here. So this fits like perfectly into this little slot because this adapter is designed for this particular chip. And you can buy different ones of these adapters for different chips for relatively cheap. They make ones for like DDR6 memory and all that stuff. And then you just pop this whole assembly here on the magnet. And here's where the nice part of this tool comes in. These little Ameo BGA stencils fit perfectly. Oh my goodness, this magnet is just strong. I see why people like this thing. Wow. Okay, so yeah, it really, like I'm almost worried about how much that's pushing down because I don't want to slide it around on top of the, there we go, on top of the <laughs> repaired pads that we have here. But yeah, this, I see, I see why now. I see why people like this. I guess what you would probably do is instead of doing it the way I did it is you would put everything together before putting it on the magnet. And this thing is like nice and heavy, so it's not going anywhere for when you're reballing the chips. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit worried about reballing this APU with how many pads we had to repair, but this thing I think is going to solve that problem for us. This magnet is a lot stronger with this stencil than I thought it was gonna be. So let me just show you under the microscope here. Like you don't even need to worry about lining up the stencil correctly because it just automatically is perfectly lined up. And then you can see all these repaired pads we have here are gonna be no problem to reball with this tool. It's cool because Ameo sells these little stencils along with their paired chip sort of adapter. So I think you can get these for things like the PS5, Southbridge, and DDR6 memory and all that sort of stuff. So I'm definitely gonna be grabbing more sets of the stencil and adapter here. This is absolutely a huge win in my book. Really, really happy with this. And also really happy with this little piece of metal here. <laughs> I'm hyped to try reballing this APU with this setup. So really cool tool. We'll definitely be using this in a future video soon. All right, we've got another package here. I don't actually know what this is. Can't remember. Okay, yeah, I remember what these are. I'm very excited for these. These are both something I already have. Well, not this specific one, but mine are getting a little bit, what's the word, <laughs> used, I guess. And one of mine broke. So these are, oh, actually, okay, so I don't have these yet. That's not what I thought this was gonna be. I forgot I grabbed these. Very excited about these. These are ceramic tweezers, similar to the ceramic scissors, but they're tweezers. And I don't actually have any of these, but I've been meaning to grab some for like a long time now. <laughs> And here they are. Oh, these are really nice. I didn't think these were gonna be this sharp. All of the like ceramic tweezers I've seen are pretty blunt. Yeah, look how nice and, and sharp they are. These remind me of these mechanic tweezers in the sense that they're sort of easy to press inwards and hold, which I think is kind of an underrated aspect is how hard it is to hold them together or hold a really tiny component for a long period of time. Because honestly, with, with these, you really have to to push pretty hard in comparison to these two here, especially especially these. These are really easy to hold components with for a longer period of time. But it sounds a little ridiculous, but it really does make a difference at such a small scale. So let me show you these under the microscope quick. So here are the tweezers right here. They're pretty sharp for ceramic tweezers at least. I feel like a lot of the others I've seen are are pretty blunt, but yeah, these are these are super nice. So here's these compared to the mechanic tweezers I just showed you. They're actually sharper a tiny bit. So yeah, big fan of these. Sometimes it's nice to have non-conductive tweezers like this. So I'm really liking those so far. We're gonna probably be using those in future videos. I'm not sure I really like the like cover that comes with this. It's kind of weird. It doesn't really go on nicely. So, and I like to keep the cover on my tweezers. The only ones I don't keep the cover on are the blunt tweezers I have because I want to keep the, the tips nice, but it's kind of like annoying to be honest, but otherwise, pretty happy with the sharpness of these. So find a nice spot for these in my little stand here. Cool, okay, and then I have these, which I'm really excited about. And I got two of these, so the other ones must be in the other package. But these are what I thought I was opening <laughs> before. And Anakin wants to open the other packages. 
He's curious. You want to do the rest of the unboxing for me? But yeah, these are essentially a new pair of these guys that I bought a while ago. And I've been using these for a long time now. But you can see the problem if I show you under the microscope. So these, these are not horrible, but they're pretty bent up. So I'm still going to use these for like scraping and more aggressive tasks that require sharp tweezers. These straight ones are not too bad. But check out my bent ones. They, I didn't think they were this bad actually, <laughs> but they've, they've seen better days. So yeah, the time to retire these. I might still, <laughs> I might actually just break off the tip of, of this other one here and use these as more blunt tweezers, <laughs> but you can see they're, they're pretty, pretty bad. So you can see why I got new ones. I decided to go for a different brand just to try them out. These are the best brand. And I went for these because I'm really impressed with this best brush. You, you've seen me probably use these in a, all of my videos almost <laughs> since I got it. And I haven't tried their other tools, so I wanted to give them a shot. Now this, this is a proper tweezer cover. Look at this, it's a really nice cover protecting the, the tips on these other ones here. You can see it really only protects it up until, like right up until the tip and not even, like you can see the tip of the side that's still on there is basically almost touching the end of this cover, which I'm not a big fan of because if I were to drop this with the cover on, I'd want it to protect the tips or if I were to brush something on it or drop something on here, I'd want the tips to be protected. But in this case, it's very likely they would bend anyways. Whereas this, this is great because this is actually protecting the, the tips here. So, all right, so let's give these a shot. Take this little thing off. Yeah, these are these are really nice. I'm really a big fan of the, the color and the shape of these. They fit really nicely in the hand. Let me show you under the microscope how sharp they are. Yeah, this is perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. So same exact thing, just not demolished. And I'll show you, I, I have shown you guys a few times now, but I'll show you the difference between tweezers like this and like this. They're used for different things. I'm not gonna use these for everything. And I'm not gonna use these for everything, but you know, it's nice to have a collection of tweezers that are designed for different purposes. So here's the, the difference. You can see just how much sharper these best tweezers are versus these, but it doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean they're better in any way. They're just used for different purposes. So I'm gonna keep these nice and I'm gonna continue to use these for sort of scraping and more aggressive tasks. Whereas these, I can keep these nice and sharp. All right, and then we've got this. And I think I know what's in here. Hopefully the other pair of tweezers, but we'll see. We've got a nice bright yellow package in there. All right, I think this is the other pair of tweezers. Let's see. It's got similar, similar packaging. Yeah, although this has different bubble wrap. This is like the kind of bubble wrap that like toner comes. Oh, I absolutely love the green color of these. They're very pretty. Again, like super long protective cover that makes it so that it protects the tip past, you know, where the tip goes. There's like a good solid centimeter after the tip that's protected. So really happy about that. And these are just the straight ones. So exact same thing. I could show you the difference between these two under the microscope. So here's the bent ones and the straight ones. Nice and sharp. So I'm gonna be very, very careful not to drop these because that's why I had to buy new ones. All right, and then let's see what this is. Got a few things in here. Oh, and I know what these are. These are gonna be for another video. Same one as the uh, clean room wipes. And here they are. Uh, these are little cleaning sponges and they're designed for soaking up like flux and like absorbing stuff on the circuit board. And these got me curious, so that'll be for another video. And uh, these are actually the same thing, but they come in a bit of a different sort of format and they're by M.A. Ant or Ma Ant. I don't know how to pronounce that. But yeah, same idea, little sponges for cleaning. And I wanted to sort of compare these along with the clean room wipes. So that'll be an upcoming video where we test these out because these got me pretty curious. So keep an eye out for that. All right, so here is the last package. This thing is stuffed. So first we have 50 pack of these waterproof seals for the iPhone 12. Uh, we're gonna be using one of these today, but they're relatively cheap. So got a good chunk of them. I always like to buy stuff like this in bulk, even if I don't always need a ton of it. I honestly don't repair tons of phones, but it'll be nice to have these lying around. And here is the screen for an iPhone 12. The customer opted for a third party screen, but it's a 
pretty nice quality one. Oh, and <laughs> it comes with one of these, so I didn't need to buy 50 of them. <laughs> so we'll be doing that today. And while we're at it, we're gonna be replacing the battery. So this is the extended battery from Amcentrix. So we'll be installing that. Um, I wanted to get one of these like sort of handheld tools. I have one like this, but it's not all that thin. I kind of bent it up at one point and I don't know, it's just kind of big. So I wanted to get a little smaller one of these and this is a nice size. Oh, and it's nice and it's nice and thin here too. That was one of my complaints about this one is it's not really all that thin. I don't know if you, you probably can't see that on the camera, but the one on the right is just a little bit thinner and it really does make a difference when you're trying to use these to get into devices. So anyways, I just needed more sort of ergonomic pry tools and I like this. It's nice and thin and it's got like a nice sturdiness to it. It's not like too flexible. I think it's nice because they made it like thicker towards the base so it doesn't have too much flex to it, but still thin so you can kind of get in between thin areas. So happy with this. Let's take a look at what this is. I honestly have no idea. Oh, okay. So I got these for similar reasons to the little pry tool there. These are like little plastic cards. I think there's, there's 20 of these. So these are just like little thin plastic cards you can slot in as you go around devices that are annoying to open. It's just nice to have little thin cards like this that you can stick in and leave. And then you can continue around the device with a tool like this and stick them in as you go. So I've been meaning to pick up something like this for a little while. So that's what these are. So that's gonna be super useful. And then what on earth is this? Oh, okay, these are the battery adhesives for the iPhone 12 or 12 Pro. So this is just to hold the battery down, just like this. You can see the adhesive has the space for the MagSafe. So there's that. We also have this brass sort of cleaning thing from Best. I have one, but it's kind of annoying because it's not heavy. And this one is actually like metal. This one's sort of just like a cheap plastic. I don't think this is a genuine Hakko one. I'm not a big fan of it because it slides around my desk a bunch and I probably just dump solder all over my desk. But yeah, this one from Best is a little bit more hefty. And you can see it has this nice footing across the whole base of it instead of just these like three little dots on this one. You'll be able to see the difference and what I'm talking about here. If I do this, you can see this just moves around. But if I do it now, yeah, it moves a little bit, but it's at least gonna stay where it is if I stab this thing a bunch. Whereas this one just kind of keeps moving back and back. <laughs> so happy to have this not move everywhere on my desk. So there's that. All right, and lastly, we have, I think that's everything. Yeah, we have these little pry tools. So today's a pry tool day. I've seen these sorts of things around and I've always wanted to get some nicer, like sturdy, proper pry tools like this, you know, for things like opening the PS5 power supply or that kind of stuff, you really need some nice, like sturdy pry tools. And I've just been demolishing my <laughs> flathead screwdriver tips <laughs> instead of getting some proper pry tools. So these are nice. There's all sorts of different shapes here. Some that have these like nice bends to give you some leverage. So happy to have a set of these. But yeah, here's everything I grabbed. I thought it would just be a fun video to go through some of the new tools I'm getting in, especially when I get a big shipment at once. This is less of a review of any of these items and more of just like first impressions. So don't take anything I say in this video as a review, except for maybe this magnetic thing. This is gonna be a game changer, I can already tell. So I'm really excited to start using this. As I mentioned, I'll be doing a separate review video for these cleaning items here. And I'll have affiliate links for all these items in the description if you want to support the channel and if you're interested in any of them. But otherwise, I appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.